So, we're ready to go? It's nearly evening. It's neither afternoon nor evening, is it? Everybody had lunch? Yes, sir. Everybody sleepy? Just nice, cozy chairs, nice air condition. It's a good day. So, what's up on Saturday? You just here for this session or do you normally hang out in, in school on Saturdays as well? Yes. There are classes on Saturday. Yes. There are exams. Done. Yes. And then you will sit for the session. Yes. What would you rather be doing then today if you were not for the session here? Yes. Sleep, yes. GT. Anybody anything better to do? Sleep, like sleep? Yes. Maybe that's that's a good part. Yes. How much sleep how much sleep do you get? Do you get a lot of sleep? I did not. When I was doing my MBA, I just did not get any sleep at all. Somebody gets good sleep or, no. or you feel sleep yeah, deprived? Yeah, it's so pretty. <laughs> 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 I'm just like, I'm just like. Is somebody or <laughs> <laughs> There is somebody. There is somebody. Yeah, 11 to 8. 11 to 8? Sanjay, <laughs> you need to finish 32 years of a career, then you get to do that, right? Ask him how much he was sleeping when he was your age. We'll see. All right, thank you so much. First of all, I want to thank Professor Dr. Salini, uh, Sanjay was a dear friend for inviting me here uh, to come and spend some time with all of you. Uh, I came in a couple of hours ago. I got a chance to talk to ma'am and you know, understand you know, the philosophy behind the school. You, know, you guys have been around for six plus years and you know, it's always fantastic to be back in an education institution. I was telling ma'am that I grew up in an education institution all my life. My father uh, was an educationist and when I spoke to her, I could see the passion that you know, once you are a something, it never comes out of your system because that's what you really like to do, right? And so for me personally, I'm a consultant at heart. Uh, I've done that for 18 years. And I hope today I can talk to you a little bit about you know, what, that, what that has been for me. And hopefully you can get some sense of you know, what that can mean to you, right? So usually when I, do, when I do any session, I always feel that it's very easy for somebody like me, or Sanjay and some of us who stand on the stage, and we can stop for hours. Like I'm a consultant. Like that's what I get paid to do, is to talk, right? I go talk to my clients, I go sell, I get deliver. So instead of me deciding what the session is, I would like to know from you. What do you want out of the next one hour or so? And what will be worth your time and my time so that when we walk away from here, everybody is better off than we were an hour before? So I'll ask that question back to you. So if you thought this was a session where you can go sit back, close your eyes, listen to me, not happening. Okay, this is an interactive session. I'm a consultant, like I said, and I'll make sure I draw you into my conversation when I tell you my stories, but it has to be driven by you. So, you tell me what would you like me to talk about today. I'm saying. How to make a career, not to be for a job. Okay, how to make a career. Fair enough. Done, I got that on my list. I got this actually there. Let's see how many of you covered my list. Difficult to make a consulting job in the early stages. Okay. So then how do I actually shift to Okay, how do I how do I make a career? Fair enough. Do you understand what consulting means? Standards different domains. Yes. So how do you manage that? Okay. Your finance Sure. So is consulting like a broad term or is it restricted to like a field, for example, let's say a marketing consulting? Yes. I want my point. You can take a mic, yeah. It's just that everybody else can hear it. Yeah, so when we say consulting, do we want to get into marketing consulting or finance, be a finance consultant, and rather not the generalized consultant. So, okay, fair enough. Okay. Anybody else? Those still very similar questions for me, I can, I can cover that. I mean, what are the typical kind of tasks or, you know, clients that we have to do or the, how would the job be? Job profile, what, is, job what does a consultant do? Yeah. Right, what is the job profile? What are What is expected from you as a consultant? Okay, got it. I can talk about my life, and that's what I can tell you what we do. What else? I'm uh, having 10 years of uh, work experience in procurement. OK. Uh, in Jamal Limited. OK. So I want to know, like, at this level, is it possible to get into a consulting job? Uh, so if at all it's possible, like, how do I start? How do I start? Actually, it's very interesting. I mean, I'm just going to jump a little bit uh, for, for, for a few minutes into that. Actually, one of the places that we actually hire is from the industry. You can understand that, and I mean, as I'll talk about it later, later as well, is consulting is a lot about depth as much as about breadth, right? And very often, many of my colleagues, many of the people in my business, there are people who have spent numerous years in a particular space because you have the depth of understanding how a 
government defense organization works, which somebody like me or Sanjay would absolutely never have because we haven't worked in that space. So you bring in, so I talked about that a little bit of how that, that relates to the question is, do I do breath, do I do depth, where do I draw the balance? Because consulting is a lot about that. So sure, thank you for asking that question. What else? Come on guys, it's your session, it's not mine. So same thing for me also. I okay. have a of experience in power, the power sector. Okay. So now as I'm in, as I'm in PG Picks program, so I just want to know that, uh, that in consultancy, I can, I can have my career. Sure. So, so I just need your... You do that? Okay. Fair enough. What else? This side? So uh, basics about how do you go about solving a case in consultancy? How do you solve? Okay. Oh, okay. You want me to do a case solving? Okay. You want, to, you want to learn how to do casing? Okay. How many of you done casing? Okay. Pretty much everyone? How many of you, or maybe you rate yourself, how many, how many of you would rate yourself like on a 9 or a 10 top what on a casing? Anybody rates yourself on 9 or 10? Anybody rates yourself on the 4 or 5? So everyone likes to be in the middle, right? Everybody likes to say, I'll rate say, I'll be on the averages. The average doesn't cut it, my friends. Let me tell you that. Averages just don't cut it. In, in, in the cutthroat world of consulting business or any high end consulting topics, it does not. You've got to be in the top. And you've got to believe. It's, it's all a perspective. There is no, in any casing, I've never done my casing in my life where there's a perfect answer. I don't know if Sanjay, you were done. Where there's a perfect answer, there is no perfect answer in this world. It is the best answer that you can get to that meets your clients' requirements. So fair enough. So, so far I've got consulting as a business, looking at the depth and the breadth of a consulting, somebody who has a lot of industry experience, how do you translate that? How do you go about solving or kind of do your job as a consultant? Fair enough. Anything else? Is consulting more of a quantitative or a qualitative aspect? Is it more of a quantitative or a qualitative? You speak by experience, or you speak by numbers, and you justify saying that this is that these are the numbers and like, this is why you should do this. Simple answer is both. <laughs> Simple answer is both. Right? And you know there's a there's a word in consulting we use, and it's a word most most used and abused word. And the answer is, it depends <laughs> on everything. You can go to any client in the world. You can always say, like, it depends. Right? And then you can start your answer. So it's a very good way to start your answer. You know, something with it depends. Right? It really depends. Like when I need to do qualitative, when I need to do qualitative, when I need to bring both, it depends What the question is. OK, what else? Yes, sir. What is it? Day to get into a consulting firm, I mean, do you have to do, would you after MBA or do you have to do something else and then okay. get because you said about the depth. Yes. Depth would be you know, we, we would get it after quite a few years. Sure. So sure. Yeah. How would it go? Okay, yes I'm sure. So like uh, basically we know that all the school students uh, mainly prone to marketing, doing marketing things, but why not every business school student thinking for consulting consulting portion of those, only thinking marketing? Why do focus in marketing? Why not consulting? Sure. Like, how's the job trends in consulting in India? Yes, I can talk about that. This this part, top. Yes, sir. So, what kind of uh, methodologies they use in solving a problem with consulting? Okay. So okay, same 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 that goes back to a little bit. In, in I'll talk about it later. And I'll, I'll give some real life examples of what I've done in my career uh, to maybe give you some sense of what it takes to solve some of these problems. Any any other question? Last question. Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. So how much lucrative is a career as a consultant? How lucrative? Depends on how you define lucrative, my friend. What is lucrative for you? Uh, a field in which one can make good money. How much is good money for you? <laughs> it depends. <laughs> it depends. For somebody, like you were talking to some of your colleagues earlier, there are people who do the best, best degrees in the world, and they give up, give up everything, and they do, do, do non-profit organization work. They make no money, but they are very happy. They're very satisfied because not everything is monitored. But in a, in a very simple way, it is very lucrative as a, as, as a career option. Uh, I would say more than a, a, a standard general work, work on it. Because if I were to look at from a market study, because I'm just you asked me the question today, because yesterday itself we did the benchmarking for compensation for our for my group. And uh, I mean, it's pretty lucrative. It is. And by the time you have, but again, you have to get, like I always say, you have to get to the top. You have to be top of the food chain to get the most money. So if you're, you're yes, sir. The house rent we pay is much more than the salary. 
worth more than the salaries most of the people get. The houseman he pays is much more. So I'll not make it more embarrassing for yeah, him. Don't embarrass me. Yeah. Don't embarrass me. The house rent he pays is, is much more than the salaries most of the people get. Even a 10 year old working guy won't get that kind of salary. So that's a cue. 18 like, years of work. Somebody, somebody told me they first, first, before I joined consulting, uh, do you understand, the, have you learned the concept of partnership? What is a partnership? Anyway, it's academic theory definition of partnership. Let's see how critical you are. You, partnership. You want to. Uh, uh, no, a partnership as an organizational, as a partnership. Yes. Human and liability partnership. As opposed to a sole Yes, as a sole corporate company. What's a partnership? Yes, ma'am. So, in theory, it's like two people or a group of people getting together who have the same objective and they work towards profits. Yes, but that is a philosophical answer. What is an organizational structural answer as a as a limited liability partnership as a concept? They're equity owners. They're equity partners and owners, right? So that means that ten of you start a company, everybody puts one lakh rupees on the table, you have a ten of lakh rupee corpus, you start to sell, you take on all your EBTAs, you understand EBTAs by now, right? You take all your costs away, whatever's the profit, you divide amongst amongst yourself. Now, the ten of you might say, does everybody get the same money? Then the two of you might have sold a lot more than the eight of you. Start to think about that. So, partnership in, in my world, uh, in the top four, global top four, like PwC, Deloitte, ENY, and uh, KPMG, it's a limited liability partnership. What happens is if you're a partner, you work for, say, like 25, 30 years, the fun part starts when you retire. You make a lot of money when you're a partner. Do you know why? Because you get paid out for perpetuity for life as a partner. Till you die, you get paid. It's a Ponzi scheme. You know Amway? You understand Amway? The junior partners, the junior members, pay for the senior, the platinum, and those, those platinum guys, they don't sell anything, but they get paid. It's a Ponzi scheme. So is partnership a Ponzi scheme. So to go to your, to your question, when I joined consulting, uh, the first advice I was giving you, consulting is not about the money. It is about the promise of the money. So think about that, and that will answer your question. Yeah. Good. Any other last question before I start? No? Yes, ma'am. Please, please. So, hope you don't mind. When, I mean, like, this is a joke that I heard, probably it's still there, value for 30, 40 years, but I guess. What does a consultant do, right? Some of the questions like that. Yes. So, you ask a consultant, what's the time? And the consultant says, please give me your watch. And then tells you the time and takes away the watch. What's exactly. Is that still true? Still true. Still very true, ma'am. Right. So I think on that on that note, let me start with a joke. So, all of and of course, when you start your career as a consultant, you get to hear the consultant joke. So, the joke was like this: there's this there's this guy in the states, somewhere in the in the Midwest. In the Midwest, if you know US a little bit, Midwest is a massive tracts of land with huge farms. Like right? there's nothing. There's nobody for miles and miles and maybe hundreds of miles. Right. So this guy is driving this nice swanky car uh, with a black suit like mine and a tie on and sage sunshades and everything, and Suddenly he crosses this, this farmer who's sitting, nice sunny day, he's sitting in his farm and hanging out. Suddenly he comes to a speeching park, reverses his car, goes to the parking lot, gets out, and you know, takes his fancy laptop, goes to the farmer, says, Mr. Farmer, he said, do you have a minute? He said, sure. He said, can I tell you everything about your farm and everything that you do and everything that you want? The farmer's like, sure. If that's what you want to do, go ahead. He said, what do you want? He said, I will take one of your sheep as my price for that. He said, fair enough, I'm good. The guy goes, opens his laptop, connects to the GPS, checks out what is his total acreage, how many horses, how many sheep, how many ox, all the blah, blah, blah. Spends multiple hours, prepares a nice fancy report, which you guys are very used to now. Doing some fancy reports, comes out of fancy reports, goes to him and tells me, you have these many acres of land, this many number of keep sheep, cows, this, that, that's to produce everything. So I said, I said, yeah. He said, am I right? He said, pretty much. I'm pretty right. He said, good. So he said, now can I get my reward? He said, sure. He said, go, take whatever you want. So the guy takes all the sheep and starts to walk them. He said, stop. He said, if I tell you who you are and what you do for your work, would you give my sheep back? He said, fair, fair deal. But he would never know what I do, so it doesn't matter. He said, to a point, ma'am, he said, 
first you came and I didn't ask you to come, right? You told me about my business, which I already know, right? Then you didn't know a jack shit about my business because you didn't take my sheep, you took my sheep dog. So you're a consultant and you can leave now. So that's what consultants are. That, that word has not changed. Uh, fortunately enough, data and scientific insights, industry insights, we try to make it a little bit more real and not a lot of, and I used to, my name used to call MBA was the Masters of Bullshit Administration. <laughs> as much as you can bullshit your way through, you'll do a lot better in life, okay? Good, so let me get started. So just a little bit background about myself and I'll, and I'll use my life history a little bit to answer most of the questions that you've asked me about something and things like that. So my name is Amina Nikam. Uh, born and brought up in India. Uh, spent about all my first 25, 26 years in India, doing my education, being with my family and everything else. I uh, started my career at IBM, uh, spent about a year there, uh, didn't like what I did, what I did. Uh, I was very clear, I was talking to a bunch of you earlier, did not like what I did. Being a dot in the big sea of blue, uh, I felt that was something more I wanted to do in life, something more, more tangible, more specific in life I wanted to do. So stepped out, called my, called my dad, said I quit. He said, are you insane? He said, you just did nine months of job and you already want to quit? Don't get lazy. I said, no, I'm not getting lazy, I'll do something else. He said, what do you want to do? I said, I'll do a B-School. Did my B-School from Europe. I uh, was lucky, one of my professors was a partner at Arthur Anderson. I don't know if many of you know Arthur Anderson. He used to be one of the big five before we kind of, we did some funky, funky stuff in the market and we died. Uh, did that for two years and then became part of Deloitte because Deloitte bought Arthur Anderson at that point in Europe. And for the last 16 years, I've been with, with Deloitte now. Uh, and that's been my, pretty much my career journey. Uh, and then currently I'm based out of Bangalore. Uh, I do two things in my role today. I head my, one of the business groups, which is what we call as core business operations, which is building enterprise systems for my clients and consulting business for my clients. So it's a $1.3 billion business that I run. I manage about half a billion dollar worth of business every day. Uh, with about 7,000 7, people based out of India and we have another 4,000. My boss stays in the States and uh, he manages the $1.3 billion. I manage about half a billion dollar business. Yeah. And then I have my clients. I have two of my largest clients. Uh, one of my clients is the fourth largest health insurance company in the U.S. It's a, it's a Fortune 50 company in the U.S. And uh, we, we are taking their entire claims management. Anybody who has any medical science background, life insurance, medical insurance background. So if you understand claim, man you understand claim management system, so if I take an insurance policy and I apply for a claim, all of you have medical insurance, yeah. right? If you go to Allah, Alliance or HDFC or Go or anybody else, when you take a, take a claim, the whole claim management process kicks in. And this you're talking about 15 million customers at the end of the day, dispersing about $90 billion worth of claims every year. We are taking a 40 year legacy system and transforming them and putting them onto a cloud. So it's not a technology program, it is a complete transformation of the organization for them. So imagine that running 15 million customers to migrate to a totally new platform and optimizing it. That's what I do every day along with my business. And that's that's my job profile, what I do. So turning to your questions, right? So I had I had put for myself three big categories of questions that I think that would cover. First is what is consulting? Second is what does a consultant do and how is it different than the other job profiles that you might be looking at? And the third is what do you need to do? What are the things that we look for when we are looking for consultants in the market? What is it that we look for? That means, what it means, what skills should you bring to the table to qualify or to make a case that look, I'm ready to be a consultant? That broadly covers the, the question that you have or is there any very different question that you have for me? Yeah? All right, so let me start. So let me start and what I'll do is I'll use my life story. I put my life into four buckets. Foundational, growth, transformation and continuous learning. Those are the four phases of my life which I will use to kind of tell you a little bit about the question that you asked. So I started my career, I grew up I grew up in North. Uh, my, my father was an educationist. Uh, all my life I lived in an educational institution. And most educationists, like I was asking ma'am, I'm like, where have you been? And she's like, I've been in my store, moving in and out, but my store's been my base. For whatever reason, my father changed every five years we moved to a new city. It was very frustrating as a kid. I don't know if anybody is, a, is an RB, RB kid or RB brat as we call them. Uh, you would know what that means. Changing a base every three years, four years. It's hard. It, it challenges you because you just finally get settled in a school, you make your friends, you make your environment, 
Professor Jin. I have changed all my life to Bangalore. This is the only city in my life that I stayed for seven years. Every five years, like clockwork, I have moved for no rhyme or reason, no premeditated move. It just happened all my life. When I thought I'd start my career, I would not move because I hated my father moving every five years, and exactly what I did. But what did that foundational part do for me? It did three things for me. Number one, it made change a very integral part of my life. I was not afraid of change. Most of us are very afraid of change. Change management, when you do consulting work, imagine you are going to a client and taking a 40-year-old system, and somebody who's been working on that system for the last 20 years, you tell them, you know what, I'm going to yank the system off, and I'm going to give you a brand new state-of-the-art system. You know what happens? Systems never fail. People's ability to use those systems is what fails the largest implementations of any large program. Any big program that you do, like Modi is now running this whole, what is called Modi Care. The problem is not with the program. The problem is with the implementation and the adoption of that program for the 100 poor families. If you don't implement the change management, if you don't get people to understand and use that part, that's it. Consulting is all about change. So that's the basic definition of consulting is that the client calls me when they want to do something different than what they have been doing. Because imagine to my joke where I said earlier, I'm going into a client who's been doing that business for 20 years. Imagine what credibility would I bring to the table to sell that, you know what, Mr. Client, I know you've been doing a great job, you're a success, successful multi-million dollar organization, but you got it all wrong. He's like, really? Like, really? Like, I've been doing this business for 20 years, and I was successful, and you're telling me, you would, what would make you feel comfortable to be able to confident to walk up to him and say, you know what, you need to change. Everybody needs this change. And I felt I was fortunate that change became part of my life. Second thing which I felt that I got from that was the ability to adapt. Because with change, adaptability becomes very important. Because if you cannot adapt to new environments, I know if you, many of you read and do your research as a workforce, the study says that 20 years from now, more than 40 to 50% of the jobs that we know today will cease to exist. My child, who's nine and a half years old, by the time she's 25, 40 to 50% of these jobs will be gone, and there'll be a net new jobs that'll be out there in the market. How do you prepare somebody for that? You can't, because you don't even know what those jobs will be. School the education system cannot prepare you for that. You have to start to learn to adapt, to see, figure things out in real time, that as things are changing, that's what is very integral part of being a consultant. If you have the ability and you can show to your potential employer that look, here have been my scenarios in my life where I have successfully adapted, I have successfully changed, and being able to, third part is to learn and network. Networking is a very, very critical aspect. And trust me, it is not limited to consulting only. Anybody who has to be successful in this world has to build a network. And a network is at two levels for me. It's a personal network and there's a professional network. As, as a kid, I was building a personal network. Because every time I went to a new city, I had to find those two or three people who could help me teach survive, right? Who could help me figure out what works in this school or not. Which teachers are the ones that you align yourself to, which are the ones you stay away from. You gotta have a network. You gotta have somebody who can give you those tips and tricks. So those foundational years, which were the first 20 years, 18 to 20 years of my life till I was doing my undergrad, I felt those really helped me create a very strong foundation that taught me when I realized, in fact, back in my life, that this ability to change, ability to adapt, and ability to learn and build a network are very key foundations if you're looking at a career in consulting. And I'll tell you the flip side of that before I go to my next phase of my life, which I call as a growth phase of my life. The four parts, the four things that I talked about, it comes at a price. It comes at a price because as an innate, as a human being, we are pretty lazy people. We are lazy, very lazy. We like to be in a, if you've done your, your physics a little bit, in a state of motion of rest or movement, we like to continue to be in that. And most of us is, as human beings like to be in a motion of rest, right? It's okay, oh yeah, 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 I'm going to go, 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 I'
Any questions at this point? I'm going to keep, keep stopping and keep asking. Any questions at this point? No? Making sense so far? You got the three things? Okay. Now let's go to the second phase. Second phase of my career was when I decided when I decided to quit IBM and I went to do my master's MBA, just like all of you. I did my B school from Germany. Uh, there was a school called Fachhochschule Essling. I know you were struggling with the name, so sorry about that. It's the German name called Fachhochschule Essling, uh, which is a school. It is a school which is, there are these set of schools in, in, in Europe which are specialized in industry training. So you have the pure universities, which do pure research and academia, which is a PhD and master's program. And then there are the schools in Europe, especially in Germany, because they are very focused on building workforce, which is industry ready. So this was a program that I went to, and there were a few things that I learned. Number one, I learned how to speak. If you I take myself back 20 years, I could not stand on the stage to speak. Many people in my in my work life find very hard to believe that that I could not stand on the stage to speak. Right? They could they only see me speaking. They only see me standing on the stage and talking to thousands of people every day. But I told them I said I I could not when I was 20 something, I could not stand on the stage and you know have a coherent presentation for more than 15 minutes. And, and, and those of you, I'm sure many of you realize or agree with me, when you are doing the first presentation, you always find that one person in the audience. And you do your whole presentation to that person. Right? And the person is saying yes. yes and then you're like, you're like, then you do like this, right? You want to present to that one guy, or that one, one person in the room. So that was my professor. I was doing my finance with the first presentation. And then he looks at me for five minutes and says, Amya, there are 20 other people in the room. You can look at them too. I think, yes. <laughs> you know, that's how it starts. And, and I felt that when I finished my B-School, that was the one biggest skill that I got out, was I got very comfortable standing in front of an audience and being able to speak. Most of us, what we do, we stand here and say, so when we say this, then listen what it means, and then I can read. I can read your slide. Don't, don't, what do I, sorry, I'm moving too much. Sorry about that. I think he's gonna kill me up. Okay, I'm So, I can read. I can read English. It's okay. If I could not read English, I wouldn't be sitting here. Right? Don't, don't repeat. Don't read out your story. Please do not. If you want to know what a consulting skill is, the consulting skill is to tell a story. It's to be able to tell there, stand there, use your deck as a background. Use that as a background which somebody can relate to and use that. There are two concepts. I don't know if you've learned that. There is a sit-down presentation. And there's a stand-up presentation. Do you know the difference? Anybody can tell me what a sit-down presentation versus a stand-up presentation means. Anybody take a wild guess. Guys, this is MBA. You're doing MBA. You're going to get paid to bullshit. Take an attempt. What do you think? Just the two words. Sit down, stand up. Stand up is probably walking around. Yeah, yeah, that usually happens when you stand. <laughs> it's hard to be sitting when you're standing. And I'm not like <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you cannot learn more better statement than that. Never state the obvious things. So, well, yes, sir. Sit down might be um, taking the reference of the slide that you have, and stand up is not taking reference. That is focusing more. You're getting there. You're getting there. You're closer to the concept. Anybody else? Video call, no, no, no. Video call is a totally different concept. We are just talking about a presentation, like a slide deck, like this. Okay, but it's like a different concept. Yes. <laughs> no, in a boardroom also you can go and present. Yes, sir. Uh, so maybe in a sit-down presentation, the people looking at the slide might understand it uh, just by looking at it. But whereas in a stand-up, you the, as a presenter tell. It's bang on, bang on. What's your name? Tarun. Tarun. Perfect. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah. Yes, sir. A sit-down presentation is the one in which you are not present. You may or may not be present, but your slide has enough content that is self-explanatory. You do not need somebody to walk you through the slide deck because everything that you need to understand the concept of the topic or what has been presented, you can. Somebody can still walk you through that, but you don't. And a stand-up presentation, which means that your sit-down decks will always be content-heavy. There'll be a lot more content, a lot more text, graphics, pie charts, whatever. But a stand-up presentation is one when you're talking to it. Which means, by definition, it should be a pretty empty and a very bullet point in a clean deck. Cannot have a lot of stuff in there. Because you're speaking to it. 
That's the other skill. As a consultant, you need to start to learn because one of the things that you always have to learn as a B-School grad is how to write storyboarding. Have you learned that concept of storyboarding? Does anybody understand what storyboarding means? Storyboarding. These are some of the fundamental concepts that you should be reading, especially if you want to go to a marketing sales or a consultant job. A storyboarding concept means if I take the whole, can you go to the, there's another slide there somewhere, no? There's no slide, there's another slide? Okay. No, 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 I just, it was in another slide, but I want to show you, let's just take this slide. If you take the top line, usually every, yeah, see for example, if you take the top, no, go back. It doesn't matter. It's a story. If you take the top line, there is a heading, right? The trustees and blah, 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 invite you to that. If I were to hide everything below this, can I go slide by slide, not having to tell, show you any of the content, and you can still understand what is the story that I want to tell you today? What is my objective of this presentation? That is what is called a storyboarding concept. That's how you start to create a deck. If in your life, you have, you have to always use the content in the, in the main slide, and the top line does not tell a story, you have failed in creating a story, or because then there is no story. What most of us do is we create slides. We create 10 slides. Each slide has its own story. When you go from your one side to the next one, you're struggling. How do I, hey, yeah, how do I transition? What do I say to go from this slide to the next slide? But if you've done storyboarding, the story will flow because when you, like I was talking about, naturally from me, by the time I finish my foundational part of my story, starts my growth. Because you know what? I've built my story into four parts. Foundational, growth, transformation, continuous learning. I built that story while I was sitting in the car today driving from Bangalore to here. I did not, I don't carry the story with me every day. If you can't do that, you will never be successful in consulting or a sales and marketing job for my mind. I mean, Sanjay, you've done that for years of your life. You have to tell a story at every point in time. That's what I learned in my B school, I felt. And the third thing was, to your point, was number crunching. You have to <coughs> learn to crunch numbers. There is no questions about it. You have to learn to do research. You were talking to your professor earlier. If you do not have the ability to sit down on your butt and for hours and be able to, to pour through research, to pour through content and start to filter out information, filter out the noise and really start to get the core of the material, you will never be good at your job. I can guarantee you because I'll tell you why. Because imagine you're sitting in front of a, a CXO and you're trying to talk to them about their business. If you haven't done your research, you are not having the depth and the breadth in that business. Do you think he will give you audience for one hour of his time? You're out. My brother-in-law, he used to run the biggest MA job and he said, he was missing the why and he said, he used to get exactly five minutes, five minutes by the clock to close a deal. Five minutes, M&A, finance deal. He said that my client used to always be the CFO, and he said, if he said, if I could not do five minutes, he said, either you're out or you send your boss, and that's when you're out here. Period, literally by the clock. He said, I'm not kidding you. It's not a proverbial five minutes, it's literal five minutes. So if you don't have that content, that means you haven't poured for hours and days, and I, like for example, my client is coming, I said, of course, do you know since when we are prepping? For the last three weeks. Last three weeks, I'm prepping with my partners, with my team, for a four and a half hour meeting with my CIO. Because that's the amount of effort it takes. I'm only presenting three slides, by the way, to my CIO. But I'm prepping for three weeks. I'm trying to think of what all are the things that my CIO would like to do. What are the questions he can ask me? What are the real problems? What is the messaging that I want to do to him? That is what you learn as part of your, I learned as part of my growth when I was trying to grow. Because that is the growth part. This is your age of growth. This is what you will do in the early part of your career. You will spend some, if you're a consultant, you will spend your time 12 to 14 hours a day getting into the details of things. Because if you're not on the details, you can never grow to become a leader. Because guess what? When you become a leader, if you don't know your content, how will you ever expect somebody to respect you? If your man does not do 10 more things than you do, how would you look up to her? How would you look up to Sanjay or to your professors if you are very sure in your mind, no matter how much I speak, my professor will always know five more things than I will. And if they had not done that homework, 
they hadn't done their PhD, they hadn't poured their hours, you would not respect them. Same thing goes for your job, my friends. It's no different. Those hours have to be spent. I don't know how many of you have read Malcolm, Malcolm Gladwell. Have you read Malcolm Gladwell? You should read some of these guys. I mean, they're brilliant. Tipping point. Have you ever heard? That's exactly what I was getting to. Tipping point. He says 10,000 hours. He takes the most successful billionaires in the world and he said each one of them spent 10,000 hours on a particular subject and that's what got to the tipping point. Bill Gates, classic example. The amount of hours that he spent in front of the computer before he got to the point he was. So it's a good example of it. It doesn't have to be 10,000 in everybody's case. But the point being, you have to spend a lot of time in front of the subject that you're in. I started my career, joined the consulting business. What got me into consulting? Three things, again, there's always three things in consulting. Whenever you go to a presentation, there's always three things, because I always have found in my career, more than three messages <laughs> on a slide, you will lose your audience. Because they get confused, and they lose you. That they drift apart, you start dreaming. Something, something on the other starts happening, right? In the classroom also, the teacher starts something with it. So, first slide, first topic, you remember three things, what did I say? The first three things? From foundation, change, adaptability, and So good, see? Remember the three things. First thing I talked about was the ability to start to be a consultant, to present, to be able to create and present content to my audience, number one. Number two was, I was in a client business. That means I was in Germany, I was sitting in front of my clients, I was every day at my client office. It's very intimidating. It's very easy to sit in your own office. If you, everybody understand Hindi? Apni gali mein kutta bhi shayir hota hai. Right? In your own office, you are the king. You're like, Sanjay and I are bosses, we are boss. Go to a client office like, uh, uh, you know, because you don't know. It's not your office. It's not your space. Exactly. I'm telling you. I got a job. I moved. I was moving back to India. to a story, right? I was moving back to India, and in the morning, I was at a client, of course. In the morning, it was a Thursday. I got a phone call, or, or I think it was a phone call, from my India HR saying, "Hey, I'm here. We released your offer. Please go check your email. Your offer is there. Blah blah blah." And of course, I was excited. I opened my laptop. I checked my offer letter. And I was pretty happy, and then you know, I called up my mom, my, my wife, and my friends. By evening, my client went to my boss and said, the guy's not working today, what's up with him? I made five phone calls in the day, that's all I did. But immediately the client said, he's not working today, what's up with him? I'm not paying for him. Because you know what, consulting gets paid by the hour. Who can define the job of a consultant? If you were to go to your grandmother, let's see, who can, who can take a shot at this? You have to go to your grandmother, who's grown up in a village, never been to a big city. Imagine that, bro, right? And you were to say that, you know what, Ma, Dadiji, or Naniji, I'm a consultant. How would you explain that? Huh? Yeah, no, no, no. No, not Gyan. She was troubleshoot? What is troubleshoot, beta? <laughs> problem? What problem, beta? Go there, man. Go to Tarun. Uh, I guide people on what guide, the what guide that you guide? Are you showing the monuments? One of the other picture they give you guide before say other one. She will understand that I will you will not even get that joke. Because <laughs> you haven't seen a guide before. How many of Guide was a Devaran movie and she was a guide. Right? The little guide who shows you monuments. Yes. I advise people on how to advise you know, what advice? You're using words which she will not understand. There's a grandmother in a village. Sorry, sir, what about what? Companies to help one. 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 Companies to help what is, what is best for them? No, still not consultant. No. Anybody else before I go? I think I shot it. So this happened to me in real time. I'm talking real time. So I'm in Germany. This is my first job. And I was you were living in downtown Germany, in Stuttgart. And consultant life, I don't know if you know, is a Monday to Friday life. You fly out on Monday morning to some part of 
the plan business. When I was in Europe, I used to fly to some part of Europe. And at 4 a.m. in the morning, I used to get out of my home, take a flight, go to some part of my client's office. Monday through Thursday, you work. Friday afternoon, 3 o'clock, you take your flight, and you come back home. That's your life. All your life you do this. All your life. It's a pretty shitty life at the end of the day. Yeah. Lucky me. Sometimes you get back on Friday. You did not do that either. You used to be away for weeks and weeks, and sales job is very different than something that one. Right? So, of course, I'm a, I'm a well, Deloitte consultant. Being asked to be worried about money. Okay. You'll get out of the airport, you'll take a Mercedes Benz as a car, you sit in the car, you drive it, you rent it. I mean, that's what you used to rent, right? You're in Germany, you rent a Mercedes or a BMW or, a BMW or an Audi or whatever, right? And Ola. I rent my, huh? Ola for you. <laughs> Not the early Olas. <laughs> they started with the Mercedes, the, the Uber started with the Mercedes, right? Anyway, so I used to go to this grocery store. This grocery store was six blocks away from my home, and my wife, Wife is a wife, is there? Not this one, Grossi Gatiana. Right? She used to also consult her. She used to always come back. She said, Two Grossi Gatiana, mega jati. I'm like, Fair enough. So I used to stop and I used to wear Grossi. And I saw him like, Super Grossi Gatiana. So, and he was a guy from Jalandhar, Punjab. And he was a farmer. His family was a farmer. He said, I'm going to go to the house. 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 And I grew up in Pachala. So I grew up in part of Pachala. So I can speak Punjabi and everything. So I used to chat with him. And I'm like looking at him like, how the hell do I explain to this guy that what does a technology consultant guy do in life? So I said, up Punjab se hona, hona haas hai. When the khetti, khetti hoti aap hai, hona hoti hai. When the jab, when the fasal, when the fasal is ready, what do you have to do? He said, chachi katwani padhti hai. When the aap ke was manpower hoti hai, hona nahi sir. When the kya karte ho aap? He said, sir, the hadi pe loong ko leke aata hon. I go, take my tractor, I go to the roadside, there are all these people standing there with their their tools, I pay them by the hour, they come, they cut my fasal, I load them up, and then I'm searching every week. That's what I do. I go to my client, I have a set of tools, my client asks, hey guys, I need you to help me with this, this, and this. They pay me by the hour, I do my job, and I come back. Explain that to your mother, and your grandmother, and your great grandmother, they will get it. So literally, consulting is all about that. Consulting is about going and working with somebody and trying to solve a problem. And you bring a set of tools. Tools could be technology, tools could be process, tools could be marketing stuff, tools could be anything. A tool is just a word to describe a way of doing something. That is consulting is all about, versus manufacturing is very different. Sales is, is more segmented part of consulting because sales is a very narrow definition. Sales marketing narrow definition. Consulting is very broad. Sales you don't get paid by the hour, you get at the end of the campaign on the return of interest, ROI as we call it, or value based. What value did you generate from the that campaign? So think about that and you start to understand, is this the business that I want to be in? That that question, my friends, you have to answer for yourself because I or Sanjay or ma'am cannot tell you what is it that you would want to do. We can give you guidance. We can explain to you what this job career choices mean. Because that's what I figured out when I was growing in my career. I love that. I love the challenge of going to a client and not knowing what will it be to death. Because you don't control the client. The client used to come in my desk and say, dude, go figure this out for me. By the end of the day, I want a report. Can you tell me what's going on here? And you scramble. It's an adrenaline rush. It's tiring. It's exhausting. But it is very fulfilling when you actually do go solve the problem. And you put the solution on the table and say, hey, Mr. Brian, here is where the problem was. Or here is three ideas that I think you can use, and that's going to help us solve that, that you know, production issues or whatever you might be having, or optimizing the process side, or make, and, and making your strategy into entering into a new market. When you come up with that idea and solve the problem, that's what consulting is always exciting. Those were my five or six years where I was going from client to client, and I also learned there were some fun parts. There are some, as we call it, fringe benefits. Fringe benefits are there. Travel. I love to travel. How many of you love to travel? Uh, Very good. Four. How many of you have traveled for weeks and weeks and weeks every week? Every uh, week you've got on a train or a bus or a plane. You have for how long? A month or so. A month or so. Come back to me when you're done 18 to 20 years, 32 years there, 18 years here. I travel every week. I, I spend about anywhere between 8 to 12 weeks in the States every year. 
Last, last year, I was in December 23rd on the airport in immigration in the States. The immigration officer says, oh, Mr. Nigam, I haven't been to the States too much this year, haven't you? And he said, I hope this is your last trip. I said, I don't think there's too many days left in the year. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is hard. Every week I go, my daughter, nine and a half year old daughter, she turned around to me one day and said, you're never around anyway, so what are you telling me? And my wife looked at me like, take your feedback, dude. It is a price to pay. It is a price, but you have to afford to figure out. That's what I did all these years, was my growth. Fast forwarding, coming back to India. Now we talk about, how do I become a leader? That's what I learned when I came to India. Germany was all about learning the ropes, being a consultant, understanding between management and consulting. So your question was about, let me touch that question before I move on. Was it what kind of consulting there are? Broadly, there are two kinds of consulting. There's management consulting, and there's technology consulting in today's world. Right? There are many flavors, there are many flavors below that, right? Management consulting can have like people side, human capital, off change consulting, finance, marketing sales, business development, many different kinds of, they're all subset of what we call as management consulting. And then there's general management consulting. And the second side is technology consulting, where you go and build and do use technology to provide solutions. I don't know if you know your market, most of the top pure play, which is the top three pure play management consulting companies in the world that comes to your mind first. Number one, Boston, Boston Consulting, McKinsey, Bain, PCG, right? Oliver. And Oliver, America. All three of them were a typical model where you went, you did your analysis, you prepared a beautiful report costing millions of dollars, had a very nice ROI, and said, Mr. Client, here's your report, thank you so much, give me my dollars, I'll go home. And the client is left hanging with that report. And the client likes, okay, uh, another vendor, the client, the vendor says, this is bullshit. I will realize only half of what the vacancy told you. Decode. Decode that report. The clients are changing. The client environments are changing. The client saying, you know what? Enough of that bullshit. I don't, I don't care. If you can't put your mouth where your money is, I'm not interested in your report. All of these top management consulting, including us, we are all having to transform ourselves. Because the clients are saying, I want you to start from the A and go to the Z. You may not do a lot of tech implementation, but I don't care about that. But you've got to manage that whole transition thing. If you're telling me I'm going to save $10 million by changing the process, you better execute that too. So all of you need to start to be ready in an execution and a delivery mode. And delivery is not, most people think delivery in India is writing a piece of code. That is not delivery, by the way. That is implementation. Delivery is delivering what you sign up for. Owning it, planning it, <laughs> executing it, <coughs> measuring it, tracking it. That is delivery. That's what I learned when I moved to India, which I call as my kind of my transition, transformation, and growth phase. Because I started to manage large accounts. I started to work with large organizations and large clientele, managing teams of 50, 70, 100 people every day dealing with millions of dollars of you know, financial value chain that I was trying to manage for my funds. It takes time and effort. You have to learn to be a leader because people look up to you. Your team relies on you. That's where your personal capability starts to come to the fore. Like I always said, just because you're good at a subject, especially coming back to education, I'll always come back. My father always said, just because you're good at a subject does not mean you're a great teacher. Being a teacher requires a very unique set of skills. Just because you're brilliant at a subject does not necessarily make it. Sometimes the most brilliant people are the worst teachers. Because for them, it's all obvious. It's like, what part you don't get? Like, isn't this formula? I remember I told my dad for the math program, like, problem. He said, yeah, this is so simple. I said, it's obvious to you, not to me. Right? I need the steps. We never in that situation. Right? Yeah. Right? All of us, like, dad, we say, you know, yes, you know, yes, yes. But no. He said, what are you talking about, dude? My dad, my dad was a mathematician, he was, a, he, was a, he was an engineer, he was a PhD, and every other net new value that you bring to the table except this. You don't have a product, I don't have an asset, I don't have a Honda City car or a BMW car or an or a iPhone or an Apple Watch, nothing. I have nothing. I only have this. That's the only thing I'm selling when my client is paying millions of dollars to me every year. So if I don't know how to use this, and manage the brain that each one of you carries, I'll be totally unsuccessful. So if you're looking to be a consultant, you have to be very good at managing people. And when you manage people, you manage resources. And when you manage resources, that means you're managing outcome. 
because accountability becomes a huge aspect. Huge aspect. Because every day, that's what I said, the, the trick with consulting is that you are held accountable every day. Because every day after nine hours, the client says, I paid you nine hours into $40, I paid you that much money, what did you produce for me today? Right? Every single day, you're held accountable. It's hard, it's not easy. So if you are ready for those kind of things, you are thinking about those kind of things, that is what starts to get you to the solve. And finally, as I call, today where I am, is what I call continuous learning. I'm a leader. I lead a practice, I lead my clients, and it is about understanding what does it take to be a responsible leader. And leadership does not come with title, let's be very clear. If you think that leadership came with title, you're very mistaken. Because leadership comes at all levels. When you were in school, some of you were school captains, group captains, house captains. That's leadership. When you're here, you have another role maybe. Like Abhishek, you're responsible for recruiting campus recruiting or whatever, right? Yes. Placements. You're a leader in that one. Or you're leading a group, you're a leader. Leadership comes in many shapes and forms. The biggest, you know what is the biggest attribute? What do you think is the biggest attribute of a leader? Charisma, very good. What else? Managing. managing. Managing, not necessarily a leader. That's a manager. Managing can also manage. Leader. Very good. Listening skills. Very good. What else? Staying ahead of the curve. Staying ahead of the curve. Take two steps. Take this. Take risk. Very good. Being ability because you know what? A leader is the first person who's standing out there. What, what, when my boss you say, the buck stops at me. If the buck stops at me, and everybody else behind me is covered, then I'm a leader. If I'm be hiding behind somebody, I'm not a leader. That's why they always say, being number two is easy. Being number one is very hard, because there is nobody in front of you. You're the only person standing out there. You have to be accountable. You have to be a decision. That's what happens as a consultant, because when you go to the client office and you go to the client meeting, you have to stand there and stand by your solution. When you are going to do a marketing, you're creating an ad campaign, it's your campaign. You have to stand by its success or by its failure. That's what makes leaders. Charisma is a huge part of being a leader. Do people follow you? My, my first thing, my boss, the guy manager told me when I became a manager, I said, any tips? He said, only one thing. Always remember in life, Make sure that as a manager, people want to work with you, not for you. Do you know what the what difference is? What is the difference? What's the, what's the, what's the message that he was giving me? Hello?
you have to start to sell yourself as a subject matter expert, what they call an SME. If you bring that to the table and you can showcase to your employer that look, I have the subject matter depth, that's why you should hire me, they will bring you on board. Those of you who have never worked, there are many of you, raise of hands, how many of you have never worked? If you've never worked, you don't bring that to the table, do you? So what the hell do I bring to the table? You bring to the table what I talked about earlier. Do I have the ability to learn? Can I pick up a topic? Can I prove to you that in my years of studies that I've done, I've been able to take a subject and thread bear it? Or I have created, I've an innovation. I have put a research paper. What have you done unique? Which, which I was talking earlier is brand value. For those of you, everybody, but include especially those of you who never work, you have nothing to showcase from my work experience. If you don't have a brand value, if you don't have a brand statement, what do you go sell? You have to be, has to be unique to you. You cannot take, I cannot take his brand value and apply it. I cannot take Sanjay's brand value and apply it. If he and I can use the same brand value, there is no brand value. Oh, we come and we will help you do a better job. Sure, but that's not my brand value. Any one of you can take that brand value. Then Mr. Klein will come in and we'll help you do the best of your abilities and the best the organization can deliver to you. No, that's not a brand value. A brand value is when he can say that I have a manufacturing and I can tell you the best manufacturing processes to produce you know, defense equipment. Boom, there you go. Nobody else, can anybody else copy that statement? No, but none of you can copy, only he can do that statement. That is the other thing you need to think when you're starting thinking to something like this. But in general, this applies to everybody, by the way. Anytime you walk into any room, in any conversation to any employer, any client, you better be ready with your brand value. If you don't have a brand value, I don't know how you present yourself. And that's how you start to build that. Company. Then you look at the attributes that I told you. Start to look at those attributes. Adaptability, change, learning, making sure that you're always bringing the best to the table every day. To do that, then you apply that to how do you scale that up? How do I take out all that I've learned here, package it up, and go sell that? You do all of that, you're ready to build the software. Make sense? More knowledgeable than an hour before? Or an hour, 15 minutes? Yes? yes. So thank you so much for you know being here today and listening, and I hope that some of my experiences some of the things that I've done in my business, and I don't really, I don't want to focus on what I do in my work because I don't think that's relevant. We can talk, always talk about that. Uh, there's lots of stories I can tell you about how I do my work every day. But I just want to make sure that I bring us some quality because the topic for me was, how do we make sure I help you understand what is consulting as a business? What is it that it takes you to become a strong consultant? And trust me, some of these concepts can apply anywhere. It's just not about consulting. And I'm just trying to focus on the middle of consulting. Any last questions? Any, any statements on that, um, anything, before I end my day? Yes. Uh, there's only one way, by trying it out. So there are some things, what you do is, you always have to first try something out. Without trying something out, it's, in my mind, it's absolutely impossible to say that I'm good or I'm bad. You may not know how good I am. So try. Second thing is, take a meet. Have a bunch of people around you. That goes back to your network. Have a bunch of people that you trust, who can tell you, give you some real feedback to say, do I have? And the third thing I'll tell you, which I didn't actually touch on and I should, is if you have fun, you have a flip. If you enjoy every single day, every single minute of what you do, like Pam said, She's been doing this for 30 years plus. 42 years she's been doing it. She enjoys every single day. She has a flair for this. Which you cannot enjoy for 42 years if you did not have a flair. So do not wait 42 years, okay? But you can start quick, but you can take some input. And you can also see just, am I happy at the end of the day? Do I feel good? If no, if you think it's a crappy job, it's not your flair. All right? Thank you so much. Yeah, I have another question. Sure. Okay, let me ask those questions and I'll come back. Go ahead. Question.
basically put a lecture in, in CF France. Mm -hmm. So it is uploaded on uh, YouTube. So there they were showing that how it is going to reduce the jobs of consultants also. Sure. I mean, I've been hearing that story for the last 20 years of my career that the next set of inventions and the next set of tool sets uh, will wipe out half the workforce. Uh, has it happened? Uh, no. I don't know if you ever read uh, Isaac Asimov. Have you ever read Isaac Asimov? Uh, okay, sorry, not the generation, my generation. Uh, now, I, you know what happens? It shifts. It does not eliminate, because what happens is, it's end of the day, it's still a machine, it's still a tool. Somebody says to design it. And what will happen is, the job description will change. The nature, somebody who's doing manual, so let's take ma manual testing today. Manual testing is the way when you manually go and run a software and you test it for different scenarios. There's automation, there's RPA, all that coming in. Is it eliminating all the jobs? No. Same people are now learning RPA. Yes, the efficiency, productivity per person grows, but then you left shift or you right shift depending on what kind of skill set you carry, and that is where the whole thing about change. If you have to change, you can build Sheldon, you can build any, any dump. Doesn't matter because everybody, if you're smart, you'll always figure out, and you have to learn to move value chain. I don't know if you ever heard of the high touch versus low touch job. Anybody thus heard about high touch and low touch? When you, sorry. Yeah, so, correct. Your barber is a high touch job. You can't sit in the US and look at a machine and maybe one day that'll happen as well, right? It'll, surgeries are happening. They do research, telebarbering. Telebarbering will happen one day. You sit at home, the machine will come, they will cut your hair, and it'll be done. It's not that today. I hope, or at least for as long I'm alive, I hope not, right? I hope not. It's a high tech job. But software development is a low tech job. I don't need to be physically there. So the world is moving, but that doesn't mean the jobs are getting eliminated. The jobs are getting transformed. That's why, for your generation, trust me, you will pivot in your careers at least four to five to six times, I can guarantee you that. We pivoted maybe once or twice in our careers, even if some. You guys will pivot every half a decade to a decade, you will completely pivot. Sorry, sir, question. Uh, basically, uh, question. No, please go ahead. Just an addition. Yes. Uh, what basically could probably happening in India is, I think we are going ahead with too much money last night. Yes. That is the reason why I'm not trying to eliminate the consultants here. No, no. Uh, I feel it is just that. As the first fundamental uh, basics of principle says that if we go through MBO, probably most of the confusions will be eliminated. Yes. However, the rate at which India is presently de developing, that would probably progress a little more high. This is my first point. Yes. The second thing is, uh, it's just another addition. I think you are talking about the leadership. I always felt that it's more of an opportunistic initiation. I, I have a live example of it. Mm -hmm. One, uh, Mr. Edward Bellerian was uh, working in automotive access very close by Kerala factory. Uh, he was made as a leader and he was sent to design a bracket, brick bracket, uh, for Meritor School of Automotive in the US. He went there and he asked all his engineers and other people to come and design the brick brackets. Thereafter, in most of these Indian cases, we always find the company saying, oh, you can go ahead, we are behind you. What this guy did was he designed everything. He called one time on a surprise. He said, uh, I want all the engineers who are uh, involved in this particular design to be standing right in front of the truck, which comes from a, a distance and a speed, and uh, it takes a cruising part right in front. That was the kind of instructions he gave. Yep. Right? And I think that is where India probably is trying to lose its movement. I feel uh, most of the companies, if they take the lead, uh, yes. towards this direction. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I could not agree more. I mean, leadership has many aspects to it, right? There is no one one aspect. But I think, to your point, I've been talking about multitasking. Multitasking is also reality of our life. The question is how much multitasking is, is okay. It's a balancing act. The world of doing synchronous, one other thing, one, one thing after the other, those days are over. It doesn't work anymore. No matter how hard we want to be there, would love to go back. It doesn't work. The money, the time, the energy, the cost us doesn't work. But to your point is very valid that I think sometimes we over multitask. And I think that's where your maturity comes in. And as you grow, you will realize that you will find a balance. And talking about leadership, I think it's all about opportunity. Leadership, most leaders, not every leader, I would say a majority leader, 
found an opportunity when they stepped in to a leadership role and went ahead. It was not handed over to them. It was not that there was a creator, there was a seed created for them, say, please come take the seed, be a leader. It happens sometimes. More opportunity than not, you have to find that opportunity and step in and show your leadership, and then you become a leader. Right? So, then you're going back to your topic that you were talking about. What did you talk about? Let me see if you guys are listening to what I was talking about. It just always comes back with me. Right? What was, what, was the, what was the three things that I said to you guys? What did you need to be? You need to be. It's a specific question. Specific question. I want everybody to know. So, we should, we should go for career or job. How do you say? Okay. No, 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 you, 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 I'll, I'll explain, I'll explain. He says, please be careful yes. for the job that you sign for, for the career that you sign for and the sacrifices that you have to make to be able to do big in that career. Yeah. So what, what we were talking, there was six, six of us, we were sitting in the room, we were talking about, we started the concept of a job. Everybody said a job versus a career? What is a job? And what is a career? What's the difference? Shopping for a job is also wrong. People, people do a job for 40 years. What you do for a living and what you live for. Exactly. What you do for a living or what do you live for? That's a lifetime investment. So the, what, what Sanjay was alluding to, what we were talking and I was telling the, the group was, look, it's very enticing to look at the buzzwords in the market. It's everybody's a trend. Oh, everybody's doing this. Or my group of friends, my set of friends are doing this. I think that's the best thing to do. <coughs> Have you ever stopped yourself and take a step back and say, am I skilled for this? To your question, ma'am, am I, do I have the flair? Because there is no point, guys, in being mediocre in what you want to achieve in your life. If you start with mediocrity, you would always be a mediocre. My father used to always teach me when I was growing up. First class people, hire first class people. Second class people hire third class people. You know why? Because they're always doubting. Because if I hire a first class person, <laughs> will he make me out of the job? It's an inherent human tendency. But if you are good and you are confident, you will bring the best of the minds to work with you. What I was saying earlier, you bring the best people to work with you because you're not afraid. You know your capability. So when all of you, my sincere advice to you is, Take, do your self-assessment. Sit down. <coughs> Write down on a piece of paper, what am I good at? What do I suck at? What am I really not good at? Then start to look at what are the options out there? Is it finance? Is it marketing? Is it sales? Is it manufacturing? Is it general management? Is it consulting? There are so many jobs out there. There are so many job profiles out there. You have to do that homework because guess what? It is, what I was telling you, three, five, and a 10 year career horizon. You give yourself your first three years of your career to try a few things out, to try it out. You try and do a few things. You see, huh, yeah, did this, didn't like it, let me go from there. But in the first three years, you better figure out what you don't want to do in your career. Use those first three years of your career to decide what you don't want to do. Then you will start to figure out, well, this is what I do want to do. And the next five years is when you start to grow. And the next 10 years, you just become a leader. And you become the best at it. Because if you don't strive to be the best, you will never get there. Because in this country is 1.2 billion people. There's no lack of manpower. There's no lack of manpower. There's none. There are enough, use, use, you design, there'll be 100 people applying for the same job that you are. So always my, my only ask is, think about it very carefully. But take your time. Don't be in a rush. Don't be in a herd mentality, what we call. But don't go there just because everybody's there. Each one of you has a very unique set of capabilities. Leverage them, hone them, and then bring the best out of you. And I can guarantee if I come back three years from now and we come together as a Illuminati group, I'm sure that all of you will be successful in what you decided to do. You decided to do. Not because somebody else decided to decide to follow. Never be a follower. Follow your own path. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.